YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Just the other day, Canadian Prepper posted a great video about fake news and people getting into kind of news bubbles and echo chambers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was a, a video that I had been planning on doing myself uh, recently. The, the guy is always sweeping me. He's got the great channel. He's my YouTube hero. Uh, but man, I, <laughs> I always see what Canadian Prepper is posting. It's like, oh, I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm glad he did. He did a great job of it. Probably better than I, I could have done. He's much more articulate, I think, and um, his videos just look better, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, but there was a part of, of his video that, um, that um, he didn't get to that I wanted to have in my video, so I'm going to do that now. There's a link below uh, if you want to see it, and I'd highly recommend you, you do. It's a great, a great video, and it's about... Um, Mostly how these news uh, echo chambers sort of get created, why they exist, um, and, and how you can figure out how, whether you're in one uh, or not. But the, what I wanted to talk about was what is the negative impact um, of these, and not, not the negative impact on the world. Because I think a lot of times people focus on the negative impact on the world of these things. Like, uh, you know, you get into these news things and you think everyone agrees with you and then you find someone that's like on the other side and, you know, then you're like, you're a Nazi, you're a libtard, you know, all this. And, um, uh, you know, breaks down dialogue and that's all bad and, you know, people's feelings might get hurt and, and all that. But um, I'm not really that interested in that. What I'm interested in is what, how does it harm you personally if you get yourself into one of these uh, these um sort of uh, news bubble things and it's for the, the left and for the right and um, it, it's not it's not it, a lot of people are getting caught up in these things and they're harming themselves uh, and the, the I think the best way to explain it is to talk about the the work of uh, two really great uh, thinkers um, Charles Darwin and Adam Smith uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics of you know all, all that they talk about I'm sure you've heard their names before look them up you know if you haven't um, but uh, it's ironic because Charles Darwin is like a hero of the of the left and kind of vilified by the right oftentimes. And Adam Smith is the other way around. He's the, the hero of the, the right and oftentimes vilified by the left. But their message is pretty much the same thing. And their message is um, comp competition and challenge breeds uh, innovation and evolution. And evolution is the key to survival. And I think that works for information as well. It's not just a biological thing like Darwin was getting at. It's not just an economic thing like Adam Smith was getting at. Um, it is a, uh, it's a universal rule, I think, uh, that if, if you are locking yourself into a, an echo chamber where you're just gazing at your own lovely image all day, um, you're not challenging yourself. You're not growing. You're not evolving. And... Um, with the biological example, we all know that things that don't grow and evolve have, uh, you know, have a habit of going extinct eventually, or or just being stuck in their their uh, their latent uh, or their their early primitive form. Uh, for billions of years, the Earth was just covered in bacteria um, until there was a, a massive challenge presented to all this bacteria um, in the form. Actually, it was in the form of climate change. I'm going, I'm going libtard here. <laughs> all the bacteria was creating all this oxygen. It changed the climate of the planet. Um, and oxygen back then, I mean, we breathe it because um, we evolved. Um, but back then, uh, oxygen was this dangerous gas, and it was, you know, it was presenting an enormous challenge to all these bacteria. And some had to evolve to uh, take advantage of the oxygen instead of being killed by it. Um, you see that time and time again in biological history that the big evolutionary uh, jumps forward um, when things get better, when they get more interesting. Uh, it's when there's a challenge presented. Uh, when uh, things are all kind of equitable and peaceful and there's not a lot of pressure put on the communities, there's no, there's no movement forward. I mean, this is the big reason why the United States has been such a successful nation. Uh, well, that and the uh, fact that we like, built it on the backs of a bunch of black slaves and stole it from the Native Americans. But if you want to forget those two things and just go with the thing that most people like to talk about, which is the, uh, the fact that we, are, we bring in lots of ideas, we challenge ourselves. Um, there's ideas coming in from all over the world or a melting pot. And I'm not going to turn this into an immigration video. I think that the, the benefits of, Im of immigration are so clear and so obvious that uh, they don't really even need to be advocated for though strangely they do. Um, but uh, uh, the reason that the United States has been so successful is because we never got complacent. We kept challenging ourselves. We kept bringing in new ideas. Um, a lot of the new ideas coming in were bad. 
And with immigration today, a lot of the new ideas coming in will prove out to be bad ideas. Um, everyone says with like, you know, with Muslim immigrants coming in, they're going to bring their Sharia law. Somehow I don't think it's going to stick. <laughs> Anyone that tries to bring it, I, they can try, but you know, I just, I, I don't think it's going to pass muster here. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it'll be that popular. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, so the, the cream rises to the top, the bad ideas die. And that's what made America so great. And that's what America as a, a country is, is risking right now by, you know, being all like, no world, no more. We can't take any more. You know, it, it, it uh, makes too much competition for jobs. Don't want a little competition? Don't think you can take it? Pucker up, buttercup. <laughs> That's the way you grow. That's the way things get better. Challenge yourself. You don't want to challenge? Move to Cuba? Hang out in Cuba? I don't know. But um, getting a little bit off topic here. The, the, the main idea is that when you surround yourself in non-challenging information, non-challenging ideas, you're static, you're stuck. And, and we see what happens with that in business. When businesses don't change, that's why conservatives are, hate the idea of top-down government controls on, on business and industry because it, it stifles innovation and it gets rid of competition. And, and that's the lifeblood of our, uh, of our success. And it's true. I, I, I think there's benefits of, of having some government intervention to kind of steer the course now and then. But it's true. The, the, the more free... Uh, you let people experiment and uh, and then try things. The you know the, the more good ideas and bad ideas get presented, the bad ones die, the good ones lift. Are you challenging yourself in that same way? Are you bringing in as many ideas as you can? If you are a libtard, are you looking at the Nazi websites occasionally? I don't can't say that I personally frequent Nazi websites ever, but uh, are are. Are you keeping your mind open to ideas that might be offensive to you? I, I just myself the other day uh, saw a, a description of uh, pro-life businesses being allowed to discriminate against people that they... Uh, well, actually, it wasn't pro-life. It was like right-wing businesses being able to discriminate against people. And God, the argument was kind of effective. It was sort of like, well, let the marketplace sort it out. And, you know, all these businesses, if they're excluding all these people, they're going to go... You know, they're going to go broke anyway. I didn't end up ultimately falling on that side, but I, I challenged myself to, to think about it and listen to what they had to say. Um, are you doing the same thing? If you're a right-wing per person, are you, you know, going to the libtard sites and seeing what they have to say? Uh, seeing if there's any good ideas there. And I don't mean scanning through it and looking for, like, a hit list of, like, oh, that's bad, that's an idiot idea, that's an idiot idea. Really opening yourself up to it. People on both sides of the spectrum. Because when the shit hits the fan, things are going to get challenging. Get used to being challenged every day. Keep your mind open to it. Because if you can only survive in that cushy, safe, protective zone, no, we all know what happens to snowflakes when the sun comes out, right? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.